Ten days ago, I made a shocking discovery. My wife had been secretly recorded at a friend's bachelorette party, alongside two male dancers. The footage had been captured by another woman at the party using her cell phone. Interestingly enough, this woman had confided in her boyfriend, who happened to know me. Despite not being close friends, we had some mutual acquaintances from high school. The girlfriend had urged her boyfriend to keep the video hidden and refrain from sharing it with anyone. And for years, they did just that. However, their relationship eventually came to an end, and the guy began casually showing the video to his friends, treating it as an entertaining story. It became a recurring topic at social gatherings and guys' nights out, solely for amusement. What struck me the most was that many of the women involved in the video were already in committed relationships at the time. I couldn't help but wonder if they had been mocking us. The unsuspecting men. Perhaps it was just my own insecurity talking, as the story had never reached me or my close friends. However, everything changed about a month ago when one of our mutual friends happened to have a conversation with this guy. Somehow the topic shifted to the infamous video, and he began joking about how his ex-girlfriend had recorded a wild scene at a baccalaureate party. This included two dancers engaging with one of the women, who was my girlfriend at the time and now my wife. Evidently, this guy had trust issues in his relationship back then and closely monitored his girlfriend's activities. Consequently, she recorded everything as evidence of her innocence in case he ever suspected her of cheating. In her attempts to prove her purity, she involved her friends, including the woman with the camera. They all ventured into the dancer's dressing room, where my girlfriend took things further than just flirting and flashing. She engaged in a sexual encounter with both dancers while her friends engaged in other acts. Meanwhile, the other woman filmed it all in secret. Around a month ago, our mutual friend became aware of this situation and felt compelled to confide in me. He wrestled with the decision because he knew my wife and I were happily married, and he had a close bond with both of us. He understood the depth of our love, especially as we were raising two young daughters together, aged three and five. Eleven days ago, on a Friday, he reached out to me, emphasizing the urgency of discussing something crucial. From his tone, I could sense that it was a substantial matter. I believed it could be related to his own challenges, as we had always supported each other throughout our years of friendship, which began in high school. The following day, we arranged to meet at a bar, and when I rod, I noticed his anxious demeanor. It was clear that he was preoccupied with something concerning me rather than himself. Having grown up in a tough neighborhood, my reputation as a big guy at six feet three inches preceded me. I had some troubles with the law in the past, mostly related to my involvement with a certain group. However, those days were behind me now. While people regarded me as a natural leader, especially considering my protective nature in high school, my life had changed drastically. My aggression had diminished, and I had become more composed and mature, thanks to my marriage, children, and stable job as a union electrician. It had been over eight years since I last found myself in any trouble. As I took a seat at the bar, I could sense that whatever he had to say was about me, judging by his body language. This made me apprehensive, so I turned to him, asking how he was doing and inquiring about what troubled him. That's when he revealed that what he was about to divulge could seriously impact my relationship with my wife. He felt it was crucial for me to know, rather than discovering it years later and realizing he had kept it from me. Honesty demanded that he share this information, and at that point, I felt he should just get it off his chest. And then he dropped the bombshell. A few weeks ago, while hanging out with friends, one of them had shown him a video from about five years ago. The video showed my wife with two dancers in the dressing room. When I heard about it, I couldn't believe it. Immediately, I was overwhelmed by emotions such as anger, embarrassment, and shame. I felt the urge to run into him, thinking it might be some kind of joke, but deep down I knew it was true. I distinctly remember the day my wife mentioned attending a bachelorette party for one of her friends five years ago. We had already been dating for about seven months then, but we hadn't lived together yet. My girlfriend was from a traditional Irish Catholic family, and she was exceptionally beautiful. I really loved my wife, so my first reaction was to protect her honor and reputation. In the past, I might even have actively confronted my friend because he mentioned it. Maybe that's why he didn't tell me about it earlier, knowing my history of being prone to rage. I asked if my friend had a video recording, and he claimed that it was on his friend's phone. He said he had only seen part of the video but it seemed suspiciously to me that he was lying, because usually people don't watch only part of such things. However, this detail no longer mattered. 
I realized that my friend had not brought me here to play a cruel joke on the topic of my wife's infidelity. It would be extremely risky with someone like me. So I asked him how I could contact the person with the video, and my friend said he could arrange something. I asked if I could get his phone number, and my friend came out to make a call. We went out together, and upon returning, he told me that the man had not replied, but had sent a message. My friend assured me that he would inform me as soon as he heard something new. Initially, I wanted to leave the bar and immediately call my wife, but my friend advised me to think before doing rash things. So I decided to stay at the bar and talk to a friend about my relationship with my wife, which had been great up to that point. I never expected her to be involved in something like this. The first year we met, she was in a bit of a wild mood, but I didn't realize how much. After the first year, she seemed to pull herself together and put this partying phase behind her. However, she changes when she drinks. When we started dating, she was still in that partying phase, but that's no excuse, because at that point, we were in a serious relationship when she attended that baccalaureate party. Our attitude, like any other, had its positive and negative aspects. Alcohol problems were a problem at one stage, but she got over it, mainly because of our first daughter. While I was talking to a friend, he got a message from that guy, and he said he could give me his number. I immediately called him and asked if we could meet so that he could give me the video on a flash drive. He said he was out of town and would be back next week. I expressed my interest in getting a copy of the video and asked how much he wanted in return for deleting it from his phone or any other storage. I was hoping he would agree to remove it voluntarily, but he asked for $11,500. That was one of the reasons I never liked him. I managed to convince him to lower it to $11,000. There was no apparent reason for him to save this video. My wife and his ex-girlfriend are no longer in touch, and his ex-girlfriend probably won't hold it against him. I think he was just an evil person. However, I was glad he asked for the money because it allowed us to create a legal agreement prohibiting him from distributing the video to the public, leaving me the owner of the only copy. My goal was to protect not only the honor and reputation of my wife, but also my daughters and myself from further humiliation. The thought of a video of my wife circulating on the internet would be a significant embarrassment to my family. I wanted to control the situation as much as possible before dealing with my wife. Later it was rumored that the video was too explicit, even for the imagination. That night I was too drunk to drive, so I had to call a taxi and park the car in the parking lot of the bar. When I got home, I barely got through the door. What I remember is calling my wife on 403 and passing out. I wanted to confront her that night but I was too drunk to handle it. The next morning I woke up hungover on the couch, wrapped in a blanket. My wife, I think, was supposed to go to work that day, but she called because she was worried about my unusual behavior and wanted to find out what was going on. She handed me a glass of water while I was sitting there, and after taking a sip, she asked me what was bothering me. I looked at her, and all the memories of last night came back to me. I hadn't been so angry with my wife in a long time and I needed answers. The images of her with those two dancers were all I could think of. When I looked at her, I just couldn't find the words to say. I started crying like a child. I couldn't remember the last time I cried, and it was one of the lowest moments of my life. My wife seemed puzzled and started crying too. She wanted to comfort me with a hug, but I pushed her away. At this point, she started to get annoyed and kept asking what was going on. Finally, I told her that a video appeared on the internet showing her participating with two dancers at a bachelorette party five years ago. Her expression was full of confusion, and then she started denying it, claiming it was fake. She insisted that it couldn't be true, but I reminded her what kind of bachelorette party it was and asked if she was there. She admitted that she was, but strongly denied cheating. She said it was all a lie, but I assumed that maybe she was intoxicated and couldn't remember what happened. She replied that if she was with two guys, she would definitely remember. She asked me to show her the video, and I replied that the person with the video was currently out of town. At that moment, I really wanted to believe her. She seemed genuinely sure it wasn't her. I thought maybe it was a hoax to extort $11,000 from me, but such an amount did not seem worthy of such a trick. I really wanted to see the video to make sure my wife was telling the truth. The man texted me that he would be back in town on Tuesday, and today is Sunday, so I was very worried. I couldn't stop thinking about this video. My wife started behaving strangely at home, doing something unnecessary, as if she felt guilty. She keeps asking if I'm okay, giving the impression that I'm crazy or that I just made up the whole story. Who could have come up with something like that? On Monday, I couldn't wait any longer. I told the man that we don't have to meet right away. 
I can send him $11,000 through the Cash App, and he can download the video using Dropbox. He said he didn't have enough space on Dropbox and couldn't delete anything to make room for the video, so I suggested he create another Dropbox account, which he did. By Monday evening, I had sent him $11,000 via the Cash App, and he sent me a link to the video. I opened the video and saw a group of women, including my wife's friends from those days, who were happily admiring the dancers' performances. Then I saw my wife touching the dancers and their private parts through their clothes. The video switched to the locker room, where my wife and two other women were kneeling preparing dancers. I rated about five guys if you know what I mean. And then there was another part of the video where my wife was engaged in sexual acts while remaining clothed, the two dancers swapped places. The video was as explicit as I feared. It looked homemade and poorly made, but it was her without a doubt. Her voice was unmistakable. This personal moment, which I thought was just between us, turned out to be revealed to complete strangers. It seems that the dancers knew they were being filmed, but they didn't care. I'm not sure if my wife and her friends realized that they were being filmed, because they never admitted it. She was not forced to do anything. In some cases, she actively sought attention and even initiated. She was indulging in these guys she met that night. I just need to talk it out, because I've always believed that there are special moments shared by people I love, and it feels like my faith has shattered like a soap bubble in my face. It seriously affects my self-esteem, and the worst part is that I can't help but think that I've missed her in the past and I'm missing her now. In our current relationship, the fact that she is close to me is of great importance, especially after the birth of our second daughter. But she enthusiastically engaged in these affairs with complete strangers, without delaying herself. I just need to talk it out, because I've always believed that there are special moments shared by people I love, and it feels like my faith has shattered like a soap bubble in my face. It seriously affects my self-esteem, and the worst part is that I can't help but think that I've missed her in the past and I'm missing her now. In our current relationship, the fact that she is close to me is of great importance, especially after the birth of our second daughter. But she enthusiastically engaged in these affairs with complete strangers, without delaying herself. I wonder if there is anyone among you guys in a relationship who has experienced something like this, because it seems to me that this happens not only to me. My wife, before I saw this video, was almost perfect. A great mother to my two girls, takes care of me, and she's not lazy like most unfaithful wives. She's completely traditional now, although I probably wouldn't have said that about her when we first started dating, but she grew up with it. That's what makes it so hard to get away from it all. Regarding your question about protection, they used it, although it doesn't really matter, but they used protection, and she was so caught up in it that she probably wouldn't have noticed if she hadn't been there. I remember how insistently she insisted on using a condom when we first found intimacy, and it even earned her a little in my eyes then. This whole situation makes me wonder if maybe our relationship has been one big lie all this time. Maybe I don't really know who she is. Maybe she had other partners that I didn't even know about, because she could have sworn with her life that the person in the video wasn't her until I saw it. If I had just heard about the video and not seen it, I might have believed her. She was so convincing, and now I wonder what else I believe is not true. When she returned home in the evening, I connected the video to the TV so that she could clearly see that she was in the video. I admit I overdid it because I was furious at her. She clearly saw that it was her. I admit I overdid it because I was furious at her. I thought she would show at least some remorse or ask for forgiveness, but no, it was as if she had prepared excuses in advance. She even claimed that we weren't in an exclusive relationship at the time and even said that we weren't in a relationship at all. I replied, even if she was right that we weren't exclusive back then, but we both know she's lying. How is it okay to have intimacy with two men? The person she portrayed in front of me, and who she has been acting with, since we met, is not the same as I saw in the video. She then changes her story again, claiming that she was drunk and that alcohol allowed them to take advantage of her. I pointed out that she was clearly a willing party, and there is no moment in the video when she resisted. She objected, saying that the video was faked and did not show the full picture. She also blamed alcohol, but she was a little tipsy, but still aware of everything. Her motor skills were normal, and she wasn't babbling. She kept lying and making excuses. I didn't want to argue with her, but it seemed like she was avoiding full responsibility. She got mad at me for bringing it up, and said it shouldn't matter because we were just friends with benefits back then, not in a serious relationship. She claimed it was the past, and asked how I would feel if she held my past over me, claiming that she accepted me for who I am. 
She asked why I couldn't do the same for her. We had never had a violent relationship, and I hadn't even considered it, but the way she evaded responsibility made me come closer to it. I didn't want to wake my kids, and I couldn't stand being with her that night, so I decided to leave the house with a few things and went to my colleagues to cool off, because I didn't want to do something that I would regret later, especially considering that I was already on probation punishment. My wife kept calling me, asking me to come home, but I ignored her calls. I knew that I would have to face this situation sooner or later, but I was too angry to be around her. She sent me messages saying that I was not ready to forgive her for her past, comparing it to the fact that she forgave me for being in prison for almost a year, for threatening serious harm, and that I had a suspended sentence for 10 years, which held me back in life. I didn't go to college, but my wife went and works as a physical therapist. However, I earn more because I am a professional electrician in the union during the day and take on additional projects, usually in the evenings and after work, which is very profitable. I felt like our marriage had turned into a joke, and I wasn't sure who she really was. I'm not saying that I thought I was going to marry the perfect angel when I proposed to her. I knew that almost everyone has their own secrets, but this one seemed to be too many. I knew she had a past when we were dating, but I thought she was just like any other ordinary girl for fun. I remember asking her how many boyfriends she had and she said five, which was obviously a lie because it was after the baccalaureate party. I knew about three of her past boyfriends and two short affairs so who knows how many more I didn't know. However, part of me believed that despite all this, we still had a good relationship. But another part of me wondered what other lodges she had told me. At that moment, I was deeply confused and my life seemed to be falling apart. I couldn't stay with my friend for too long because I had electrical installation projects and deadlines to meet. My house also served as a storage and office for all my equipment, so I couldn't hide with my friend indefinitely. I needed to return home because I still had common obligations as a father and a deadline for fulfilling the contract. Thoughts of divorce or legal separation had not even occurred to me yet. I was still trying to absorb all the information. I felt deeply depressed, lost my appetite, and badly needed to meet someone. My father has been a constant support for me in times of trouble. However, during my younger years I often disregarded his advice, which led to numerous issues. As I've grown older, I've come to appreciate his wisdom and started listening to him more. Given my situation, I decided to reach out to my father and confide in him. To my surprise, he hadn't expected my wife to possess certain traits, although he was aware of her troubled past, much like mine. My parents had grown fond of my wife because they believed she brought out the best in me and had a positive impact on my life. She had an uncanny ability to show them the side of her that she wanted them to see, and she excelled at it. While most people who knew her wouldn't perceive her as that kind of person, her close friends might have had a different insight. My father, who has been happily married to my mother for 36 years, possesses a wealth of wisdom when it comes to relationships. He mentioned that times had changed since women now have access to social media, which amplifies their interactions with men and their means of seeking validation beyond their local community. Unlike in the past, Women can now capture attention from men all over the world through social media platforms. Diving deeper into the matter, I discovered more regarding my wife's interactions when I checked her social media accounts. However, I will discuss this aspect later. My father's advice revolved around my return home and becoming a stable presence in our household, particularly for the sake of our children. He suggested that I should listen to my wife in a non-judgmental manner to mitigate her defensive behavior, and if she were willing to put in the effort, Consider the possibility of reconciliation. He emphasized the notion that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, pondering that if my wife could deceive me, who's to say the dynamics would differ with another woman? While acknowledging the difficulty of forgetting what had transpired, my father proposed that if forgiving her became too arduous, it might be time to explore alternative plans. After conversing with my father, I felt a newfound motivation to confront this challenging situation head-on upon returning home. Upon my arrival, when I was about to take my daughters to school, my wife expressed the desire to have a private conversation with me. I informed her that we could discuss it later that night, and it appeared as though she had been crying for quite some time. Frankly, I didn't feel much sympathy towards her as she had yet to admit any wrongdoing. Furthermore, I received a text from the acquaintance affirming that he had deleted the footage and no longer had it in his possession. Given the lack of verification, I had no choice but to take his word for it. I also informed him that I would be sending him some legal documents, as previously agreed upon. That evening, my wife was already at home when I arrived. 
I prepared myself for her to come clean and confess about her infidelity, ultimately admitting that she had deceived me and presented herself differently at the inception of our relationship. She was seated on the balcony upon my arrival, yet even as I looked at her, I couldn't help but perceive her as a stranger. The image I once had of her seemed to have shattered. I used to believe that I was the only one with a troubled past, but at least everyone knew about mine, and I was willing to take accountability for it. As I stepped inside, took a shower, and changed out of my work clothes, she greeted me upon seeing me. However, I refrained from responding. A few minutes later, I joined her on the balcony with a beer in hand, and an uncomfortable silence engulfed us. My plan was to allow her to speak and potentially uncover any other lies she might attempt to fabricate. It was evident that she anticipated me to begin interrogating her, yet instead, I opted to let the awkwardness linger between us. She initiated the conversation by apologizing for her infidelity, explaining that it occurred during a certain phase of her life. She mentioned that when we first began our relationship, she wasn't certain of its longevity and was still immersed in a partying phase where she engaged in activities she now regrets. Expressing remorse for her actions, she claimed to have remained faithful since then. However, I interrupted and inquired as to why she had been intimate with those men on the very same night she met them. While I had patiently waited for months for her to be close with me, despite her constant assertions of not being ready. In response, she argued that she wanted our first intimate experience to be special and meaningful, unlike her encounter with the dancers, which she stated held no significance for her. However, her explanation made no sense to me. I pointed out that she had willingly engaged in explicit acts with them on the first day. So why had I been made to wait for a supposed special occasion? It felt as though she used intimacy as a reward for me, while readily engaging with strangers explicitly in front of her friends. Additionally, I questioned her about the possibility of other affairs that weren't captured on tape. She adamantly insisted that there were none, but my disbelief was palpable. She suggested that I check her phone and social media, claiming that she was telling the truth. I noticed that if she had enough time to edit her story, then she had enough time to delete any evidence from her phone. Although I didn't expect to find anything on her phone, I still decided to take advantage of her offer. She gave me access to all her passwords after our conversation. Although I felt that she had admitted her guilt to some extent, I still believed that she was not hiding everything. Doubt arose, and I could no longer fully trust her. However, I decided to follow my father's advice and give our relationship another chance. That night, I couldn't afford to sleep in the same room with her, so I asked her to sleep in the guest room. The next day, I initially resisted the urge to check my wife's social media because I didn't expect to find anything. I assumed she might have cleaned everything, but she was hiding something. However, I couldn't stop thinking about it and it was hard for me to focus on my work. In the end, I gave up and logged into her social media accounts after reading all her messages. I started constantly monitoring her social media and soon realized how unhealthy it was. She didn't post explicit content at the time, but I was surprised how many guys wrote to her. I noticed that she was deleting these messages to hide them from me because I had notifications, and when I tried to read the message, it had already disappeared. I thought that maybe attractive women usually get this kind of attention, even those who don't post anything provocative. Most of the men writing to her were from the Middle East and South Asian countries, so there was nothing to fear in this regard. A week later, our relationship was still strained, even though we were at least talking. We were no longer close from the moment I found out about the betrayal, but my wife was trying to reconcile, and she was tired of my constant attitude. We talked, and she suggested going to a family psychologist because she couldn't stand my behavior anymore. I explained to her that this is something that I can't just let go of when talking to someone. I wasn't sure if our marriage could survive this betrayal, and my obsessive control of her social media and text sharing was having a negative effect on me, so I decided to stop even though it made me feel even worse because it seemed like I couldn't trust her. I even started to feel like people were talking about me behind my back. One day I was at a local bar with friends and saw some acquaintances having fun with the guy I bought the video from. It seemed to me that they were looking at me and would turn away when they noticed. It seemed to me that they were laughing at me. I thought maybe I was being paranoid, but because of the video, I couldn't help but feel like everyone was laughing at me behind my back. It was very discouraging and I felt depressed ashamed and sometimes even angry. I felt disrespected, and the old me would have met with them and spoken my mind. They were grown men, behaving like little children, but probably some people never really grow up. Instead of running into them, I decided to leave the bar and return home earlier. 
It's been two weeks since that day, and during that time I haven't been close to my wife. I tried to give family therapy a chance because it was hard for me to get over it and get closer to my wife. Cheating was constantly on my mind. My wife scheduled some counseling sessions, and we found a babysitter to look after the kids while we went to the sessions. Before our first meeting, I was scared that the therapist was blaming me for everything, as I read on this site. However, this was not the case. The therapist politely but directly addressed my wife. I won't go into details, but it was like a thorough investigation to get my wife to be completely honest and restore trust in me. More truths have emerged, and my wife's reactions have made me think that there may be more such situations, although we may never know the whole truth. It seemed to me that my wife wasn't saying everything, and the therapist seemed to share my doubts. The therapist strongly recommended that we work on reconciliation and provided us with techniques to restore trust. However, I wasn't sure if reconciliation would work because my wife seemed to want to control the information I know. After the third consultation session, it seemed to my wife that she was losing interest because she felt constantly attacked. I was learning things about her that I didn't even know about, and the sessions began to reveal a side of her personality that she wasn't comfortable with. Even though she tried to convince me to switch therapists, I declined. She resorted to making excuses, like being consistently late and claiming she was too overwhelmed with work, in order to prevent us from attending our sessions. Occasionally, she would call beforehand to cancel without informing me. All of this led me to believe that she wasn't genuinely committed to taking responsibility for her actions. This occurred approximately six weeks after I discovered the affair. Eventually, I spoke to the friend who informed me about the video involving my wife. I inquired about how many people were aware of it. Surprisingly, he admitted to being one of the last to find out among his friends. Many individuals who attended our high school, as well as the majority of his friends, were already acquainted with the video. He mentioned that he stumbled upon it accidentally. I also questioned him about the individuals who had mocked me recently and discovered they were also aware of the video. Therefore, I wasn't imagining things. It seemed like the majority of the men I came across in our town knew about the video leaving me as the last one to find out. This was profoundly embarrassing for me. Upon returning home, I expressed to my wife how disturbed I was knowing that numerous people had watched the video and that there was a possibility it might still be circulating. She proposed that we relocate to a different area, and she was willing to change jobs. It appeared as though she had considered moving prior to my knowledge of the video, which I had speculated. It seemed that she might have been ahead of me in regards to the rumors surrounding the video and there was a chance she knew about it prior to my discovery. I thought reaching out to some friends who were featured in the video might be a good idea. Some of them were no longer friends with my wife, while others still remained but may not be candid with me out of loyalty to her. Additionally, some individuals who were not acquainted with her had already relocated. I attempted to contact them through Facebook, but none of them have responded thus far. It has now been three months since D-Day, and my wife and I ended up being intimate. She had deliberately tried to seduce me within our home, and one night I succumbed. It was more about desire and frustration rather than love, unlike before. For the first time since discovering the video, she stayed in our master bedroom. The following night, she attempted to initiate closeness again, but I was disinterested. Typically, I never refuse closeness with my wife, so she became frustrated. She was prepared to engage in activities within the bedroom that I used to plead for, but I simply wasn't interested. She tried to cuddle with me, but it felt suffocating. I endured it for an additional night, but couldn't bear it any longer, resulting in me sleeping on the couch since it was the only way I could find rest. The next day, she expressed her distress at witnessing how much I was suffering over nothing and suggested giving me a hall pass for eight years. However, I conveyed that this wouldn't change the fact that she wasn't the person I believed her to be. Being intimate with other women held no significance for me. I desired something more meaningful with someone I genuinely loved, but I no longer felt I could attain that from her. Approximately four months in, I called my father and confided in him, expressing my uncertainty about being able to forgive my wife and the consideration of legally separating from her. My father suggested that I spend a couple of months living elsewhere, thinking that some time apart might offer some clarity. When I arrived home that day, I informed my wife that I would be searching for another apartment nearby so I could maintain regular contact with the children. She pleaded with me, but my decision was already finalized. Exactly one week later, I signed a month-to-month -month lease for a furnished studio apartment near our house. Throughout this time, doubts about the entire separation idea plagued me. I didn't want to be distant from my children or leave my wife. I genuinely attempted to remain, but
but I believe that a temporary break from my wife would be beneficial for my mental well-being. My intention was never to permanently move out, but rather to take some time for self-reflection, as I still possess keys to the house where I store my work tools and equipment. The night before I moved into my apartment, my wife and I engaged in a profound argument. She became extremely upset with me, claiming that she had given me space throughout the entire process. She believed I was acting irrationally, asserting that I had gone mad for leaving them over something that occurred when she wasn't even sure if we were in a committed relationship. I reminded her that we had conversed about this matter previously, and I believed there were still things she hadn't revealed. I required some time to gather my thoughts. She inquired about the duration of our separation, and I informed her that I would give it two months, considering that most of my belongings were still at the house. We agreed to work towards reconciliation. After moving into my studio apartment, I began to feel more at ease. The initial day was challenging due to my wife's profound disappointment in me. She even informed our five-year-old daughter that I had abandoned them. Who would say such a thing to a five-year-old child? When I arrived to take my daughter to kindergarten and my two-year-old to daycare, my daughter informed me that mommy had been crying. When she asked her why, my daughter was told that daddy had abandoned them. I reassured my daughter that I hadn't abandoned them, as I am still here, taking them to school every day. After dropping them off, I called my wife to express my disappointment in her attempt to manipulate our children with lies about me. I pleaded with her not to involve them in our marital issues. However, she refused to acknowledge any wrongdoing, firmly believing that I had indeed abandoned them. I reminded her that the only change was that I no longer live at home, but I have remained fully committed to my responsibilities as a father. The next day, I continued my routine of taking my children to school and daycare. They seemed content and happy. Afterward, I went to work and later headed straight to my client's job site to complete some additional projects. Once my work was done, I returned home to rest, following the same routine day after day. I purposely avoided social interactions to prevent encountering people who had witnessed the embarrassing video of my wife and to spare myself from further ridicule. I preferred to keep to myself. My wife and I occasionally discussed the possibility of relocating once we resolved our issues, but for now, I remained preoccupied with my commitments. Throughout the rest of the week, I did not see my wife face to face, but we maintained regular phone conversations. Most of our discussions revolved around coordinating our children's activities, and sometimes she would even drop off food at my apartment. It was a stress-free week devoid of arguments or children's demands. It felt like a temporary escape, almost like a vacation. I even entertained the idea of moving back into our house once this difficult period passed. However, I decided it was necessary to take some time away from my wife and children to clear my mind. Some of my friends occasionally engage in week-long hunting trips to places like Montana and Arkansas, and I have received an invitation to join them on one next month. In the past, I hesitated to participate due to my wife's objections, and I often conceded. Although the trip can be costly, my friend managed to secure a group discount for us. The hunting trip is still a month away, but I have already purchased my ticket. We will be traveling in my friend's RV, and I anticipate it will be an enjoyable experience. It gives me something to look forward to during these challenging times. The following couple of weeks followed a similar routine. However, in the middle of one week, my wife called me regarding a broken dishwasher, asking me to come and fix it. As I arrived at the house to repair it, I was taken aback by the visible changes in the living room. The only times I had visited the house recently were to pick up my kids in the driveway or grab my tools from the basement for side jobs. I usually use the basement entrance, bypassing the main living area. While repairing the dishwasher, I noticed that my wife had redecorated the living room. She had changed the curtains and purchased a new couch. I couldn't help but ask her about these changes, and she explained that she simply wanted to make some improvements. After completing the dishwasher repair, I took the opportunity to retrieve some of my belongings from the master bedroom. To my surprise, my wife had bought many new outfits. When I inquired about it, she mentioned her recent visits to the gym in an effort to stay fit and work on self-improvement. I couldn't help but feel somewhat envious that she was putting in so much effort to better herself. I couldn't help but wonder if all these renovations were her way of moving on. As for me, I couldn't shake the doubt about whether leaving the house was the right decision, despite knowing it was necessary for my own peace of mind. Approximately two weeks later, as the weather grew colder, my wife informed me about a problem with the furnace. I went over to fix it and noticed more changes in the house. Since repairing the dishwasher, I hadn't seen my wife up close. She was always in baggy pajamas when waiting with our daughters in the driveway, 
making it difficult to notice any physical changes. When I mentioned her weight loss, she attributed it to her month of self-improvement. We engaged in conversation, and I sensed that she wasn't as eager for me to return. Perhaps she had truly moved on and didn't care whether I came back or not. That was the impression I got from her. She still viewed me as the handyman, taking care of the children and contributing financially. I continued to fulfill my share of the mortgage, and she enjoyed having the convenience of a man around without the obligations of cooking or being intimate with me. It seemed like she was enjoying the best of both worlds. When I informed my wife about the upcoming hunting trip to Montana, I expected her to express concerns or object due to potential dangers and expenses. Yet, she didn't voice any objections, ask questions, or show any resistance. Surprisingly, she was easy to talk to, which left me feeling uneasy. I began to believe that she had truly moved on and didn't consider my return a significant matter. This is the impression I got from her, and she didn't care if I came back or not. And again, this is the impression I got from her. Two weeks later, I went hunting with friends, returned a week later, and took my daughters to school on Monday. When they arrived at the house and opened the car door for their daughters, they seemed happy to see me. However, my five-year-old daughter asked if they would get a new dad, which seemed like a strange question to me. I reassured her that I wasn't going anywhere and asked her why she thought they were getting a new dad. She said there was a guy who stayed in the house while I was gone. Initially, I thought that my daughter might make a mistake and mistake him for my brother-in-law, who used to stay with us. However, my daughter knows my brother-in-law well enough not to confuse him with someone else. I even asked if she was referring to Uncle Jamie, but she insisted that the man's name was Jacob, a name I had never heard before. I couldn't access my wife's social media or text messages because she changed the passwords when I moved out. The name Jacob occupied all my thoughts throughout the day, trying to remember if my wife had mentioned him before my hunt. I noticed that my wife was no longer so enthusiastic about reconciliation. She just wanted me to be there to fix everything. I began to assume the worst-case scenario, that what my daughter said was true, and my wife had a romantic relationship with a man named Jacob. I thought that if I was insecure about Jacob, it would allow my wife to deny his existence, just as she denied anything happening on the video, gaslighting me. So I decided to visit her that evening while my children were sleeping. I wanted to surprise her by showing up unexpectedly, but she didn't seem surprised, perhaps because she was expecting me because of my recent trips. Our attitude remained correct, although I felt that the idea of reconciliation was losing its force. We still thought we should reconcile. I had the keys to the house, so I set off on my own. When she saw me, she asked if I was hungry, but I refused, expressing a desire to talk. We sat down in the living room, and I immediately confronted her with what I knew about Jacob and why she cheated on me when we agreed to work on reconciliation. I watched her facial expressions carefully to understand her reaction. She nervously ran her fingers through her hair, a sign that she knew she was caught on the spot. Quickly, she raised her head and explained that Jacob was her employee. They had a close working relationship, and since I wasn't around, she called him to ask for help with household chores. I persistently asked further if this assistance extended to sharing a bed. She looked at me strangely, and in a raised voice, I demanded an answer. She admitted that they slept together twice, claiming that there was nothing else. I didn't believe her story about just two times, I knew there was a lot more to it. I asked her how long this relationship had lasted, and at first she tried to deflect the question by saying that if I hadn't left her and the children, this wouldn't have happened. I felt that she was evading the question, so I raised my voice again, urgently demanding that she answer. It was then that she admitted that they had been emotionally connected for over a year, and that it had recently become physical. I reminded her that I suspected something was unfair when we were in family counseling, which is why she wanted to stop them. The therapist shrewdly recognized her lies and wanted her to confess. Looking at it from the outside, I realized that maybe I had been deceived all this time. I should have realized that our relationship was built on a shaky foundation because I didn't know who she really was. I wondered how long their affair had lasted. I've read enough about cheating to understand that a woman who has had several meetings at a bachelorette party will not be content with a simple, ordinary relationship like we had. I couldn't believe her statement that the physical betrayal only happened in my absence, and because I wasn't there, I felt there was something more to the story. I asked her how she thought we could move forward with reconciliation if she had been involved with this guy for who knows how many years. She didn't correct me, pointing out that there were clearly more than two times that she confessed to. She confessed to being unsure of her feelings for him when I calmly asked if she loved him. 
I noticed a slight hesitant pause in her manner. I got from the couch and said it was time to stop playing games. I pointed out that a woman who had intimacy with two dancers and behaved that way in front of friends didn't do it just once. I expressed my relief that she was happy with this guy and stated that now I had grounds for officially breaking off the relationship. I acknowledged that we had a good time with our two beautiful daughters and offered to stop everything. I used to question the decision I made when I moved out, but now I am certain that I made the right choice by giving her the opportunity to make her own mistakes. If I had accepted her lies and manipulation all these years, I would have lived a life of ignorance. I owe some recognition to the marriage therapist who helped me see the truth. Although she didn't explicitly say that my wife was lying, I could read between the lines of her questions and understand the therapist's perspective. It was like a dishonest person recognizing another, and I was merely a student amidst them. In that moment, I realized my wife was skilled at concealing her actions. I still had a feeling that there was more to the story and that she was keeping something from me. When I got up from the couch to leave, she told me she still loved me, but I ignored her and walked away. That day, as I returned home, I felt upset knowing I wouldn't be able to see my children as often as I wanted. I understood that there was no turning back, but at the same time, I experienced a strange sense of relief, knowing that I had been proven right and that her true colors as a cheater had been exposed. It's unsettling how true that saying about cheaters is. I'm not a religious person, but that night, I slept well, feeling as if the universe was on my side. Throughout this experience, it seemed as though everything fell into place systematically, revealing the lie I had been living. Just think, if my friend hadn't told me about the video, all these events over the past few months wouldn't have occurred, enlightening me to the reality of who I've been living with for the past six years. The next day, I called my father to share everything I had just discovered, and he reassured me that I was handling things well. He told me not to blame myself because it wasn't my fault and that everything happens for a reason, exposing what was once hidden. Right now, my main concern is the safety of my daughters. I need to know who the man my wife has introduced to them is. You probably heard stories about individuals who pursue relationships with single mothers and their daughters for harmful reasons, and I wouldn't forgive myself if something like that happened to my children. The following day, I picked up my children from school as usual. My wife called me to discuss our situation and mentioned that she still wanted to reconcile with me, promising to cut off contact with the other man. I reminded her that she had been in a relationship with him for years, so that wasn't the main issue anymore. For the first time, she challenged my belief that their relationship had been ongoing for years, claiming it only became physical recently when I left her and the children. I saw this as an obvious attempt to shift the blame, and I was not convinced. I pointed out that while we were working on reconciliation, she had engaged in a physical relationship and had even invited the man into our home. Instead of seeking revenge, I believe the right thing to do now is to get a divorce and focus on our daughters, because she had already given up on our relationship a long time ago. She responded by blaming me for leaving home and giving up, but I am at the phone to avoid arguing with her. Despite her physical attractiveness, I knew she wouldn't struggle to find another man, possibly even a better one than me. I hoped she would find someone better for the sake of my daughters, as the worst-case scenario would be if she were having encounters with random men in my house, putting my daughters in danger. The next day, I contacted one of her former co-workers, whom she had worked with for two years at the hospital in her previous job. I called her unexpectedly and explained that I had recently suffered a work-related injury and needed a male physical therapist. I mentioned that my wife had recommended someone named Jacob and asked if she knew anything about him. I framed it this way because I knew she was familiar with their workplace. She replied that she didn't know any Jacob, and the only Jacob she was aware of had been one of my wife's former clients at their past job. I thanked her and ended the call. I realized that my question to her had been somewhat deceitful, and she might eventually inquire about it with my wife. Therefore, I decided to confront my wife about her obvious lie regarding Jacob being her co-worker. I couldn't wait to discuss this with her face to face. Furthermore, there was no telling when her co-worker might inform her about the strange call she received from me, her husband. Therefore, I took prompt action and called my wife to address the issue. I asked her why she lied to me about the identity of her romance partner, pointing out that Jacob had been her client for over two years, and she lied about it. I told her that it was my right to know that she did not bring strangers home and did not pose a potential danger to our daughters. She replied that Jacob was not a dangerous man, he was a widower and a businessman who owned several hotels in the area. She claimed that he was a clean and trustworthy man who she had known for many years 
and he was her client when his wife tragically passed away. She mentioned that they had good chemistry, but because of her marriage, they couldn't achieve anything. However, when I left them, she decided to give it a try. Interestingly, she continued to try to shift the blame onto me while simultaneously admitting her own guilt in the same sentence. After my conversation with my wife's colleague, I strongly suspected that my wife had been in a physical relationship with one of her wealthier former clients for more than two years, and possibly more. I decided to make inquiries about him, and fortunately, he does not seem to have any criminal activity. I would be dishonest if I didn't admit that I was a little jealous because this man was more successful than me. However, I also realized the importance of revealing the truth about my wife continuing her secret affairs after the battle or at party incident. It was important for me to start over. Some of you might suggest doing a DNA test for my daughters, but I don't think it's necessary because they look like me. In short, two months later we divorced and I sold the house, dividing the proceeds. My wife moved in with her partner in the novel, who owns several properties, although his main place of residence is 50 meters away from us. I also moved to another city to start over. I found a better paying job and rented an apartment with enough space to store my work equipment. Despite the difficulties of adapting to a new field and signing contracts, I welcomed this opportunity. Although I miss taking my children to kindergarten every day, we share custody of my daughters and I can see them once every two weeks. Life after the divorce is not as bad as I thought, and the custody agreement gives me time to pursue my hobbies. I didn't dare to date because I was completely focused on work, and I don't foresee entering into a long-term relationship anytime soon.